Grids are the second type of datum that Revit has. They organize the project. So we're going to start off by drawing grids across the top of the project. In this folder, I put in a subfolder called handouts. I put a bunch of PDFs. So if you look at the first page of that PDF number one handout, you can see the grids that go across the top, one through six, and the grids that go down the side, A through E. And those are the grids that we're going to draw right now. These two reference planes right here, this one is the position of grid line A, and this is the position of grid line one. And so to draw a grid, it's very important that you pay attention to the direction that you draw grids in because Revit recognizes what your first click is and what your second click is and what that first and second click can potentially have ramifications later on in the project. So for example, if I go to architecture and I click on grid and then I start to draw a grid line now I'm going to snap directly to this reference plane so that I know that I'm placing this grid in the correct position. And whoops, let me do that the other way. Let me start down here. So if I go in this direction, in this particular file, now the files that you may be working with on other projects may be different, but for this particular file, the first click that I make is essentially the tail of the grid. And the second click is where the bubble occurs. Now, because the grids are set up in that way on this project, you want to make sure that you're drawing all of your grids consistently in that same direction so that the bubbles all appear at the same spot. What you want to avoid is doing something like this. So I draw the first grid and then the second grid, I'd go like this and then the second grid, third grid, I'd go like that and the fourth that is going to cause all kinds of problems because the default locations of these grid bubbles is now in those opposite locations and there's really no way of resolving that so what you want to do is just make sure that you're drawing all of your grids in the same consistent direction so the second grid i can start anywhere down here and just draw it up now notice when i draw it up it has this alignment line that appears. See how it kind of snaps to that location? That's because it recognizes when the bubbles are aligned. So I can just click and I can, with confidence, know that those two bubbles are in the same position. Now notice that this one's number one and this one's number five. This one's number five because remember I built all of those kind of extra grids and then I deleted them. Revit keeps track of how many grids you build and so if I want to go back and make this one number two, all I have to do is click on the five and then change that to a two. Now, if you have a lot of these grids, it can be a little tricky to um, draw them or it can be a little tedious to draw them one by one. So we can just copy them. But before I copy them, I want to make sure we've got the two grid bubbles up here aligned. I want to make sure that I have the grid, the tails of the grids aligned, which I don't. So I'm going to pull on this point and I'm going to pull it up until I'll see how it has that alignment line there. Then I know that the, the bottoms of the grids are now aligned. Now I can just copy the rest of the grids. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to worry about dimensions right now. We're going to worry about the specific locations of these grids after we place them. So I'm just going to use the copy command, which is this right here. I'm going to click on copy. And because I had the grid already selected, it's going to just copy that. But I want to do it multiple times. So I'm going to click on multiple right here. Now that multiple will stay selected until I close Revit. So you don't have to click multiple every single time. And then as I do this, you can see that it renumbers the grids or it numbers the grids sequentially. So I know that I need six grids, according to the handout, I need six grids that go across the top of the project like that. But now I need to get them into the right orientation. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on grid two. Now when I click on grid two, you can see it has what are called temporary dimensions that appear. 
And most of the time, the, the temporary dimensions will go to the next adjacent grid or the next adjacent object. However, if it doesn't, if it goes to some other object, let's say for whatever reason I wanted to measure grid two, not from grid three, but from grid four. I'm, I don't want to do that, but just as an example, what I can do is click on that grip right there and just drop it on level four. And now it's measuring from grid four instead of grid three. So that's just how you can use these temporary dimensions. So what I'm going to do, if I look at the handout, I can say that the distance between one and two is 10 feet. So I can click on this dimension right here and just change that to 10. Press enter and it moves grid two to be 10 feet away from grid one. Now, the key when you're using these temporary dimensions to push and pull things around is that whatever the object that you have selected, that is the one that moves. So sometimes people get tripped up because they select the wrong thing and then the wrong object moves. Um, just keep in mind that the object that you have selected, that's the one that moves. So the distance between two and three is another 10 feet. And then the distance between three and four is 20. And between four and five is another 20. And then between five and six is another 20. And that gets the grids in the proper location as they go across the building. But grid line five and six here, you can see, needs to extend a lot longer than these guys over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the end of this grid and see how all of them move together. That's because they're aligned with one another. And you can just stretch all of them all the way down. So now we're going to do the same thing, but going in the other direction. And we're going to draw another grid. So I'm going to click on Architecture, Grid. And I'm, once again, I'm going to use this reference plane so that I know exactly where the grid should go. I'm going to start over here because I want the tail to be on this side. And you can see it automatically numbers it number seven because I already have six grids. So what I need to do is click on that seven and change it to capital A. Now Revit will recognize what I'm trying to do. And when I copy this using the copy command, it automatically numbers it or letters it B. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy that grid line a few more times. And I did not quite get that one. Oh yes, it is centered. I thought I had shifted it, but it is aligned. Um, and now I need to space these out. So from A to B, click on B, temporary dimensions over here. So I'm going to click 20. And then the dimension from B to C should be 20. And then from C to D is going to be 20. Now here, E needs to go beyond D. So I'm just going to click on it and drag it down. And then we'll define this as 10 feet. And that establishes the grids for the project. Black Spectacles is a home of online learning for architecture and design. With your Black Spectacles membership, you can watch the rest of this course and any of the thousands of video tutorials we've built to help you learn architecture software and to prepare for the architecture registration exam. Visit blackspectacles.com now to get started.